Hello, I'm Mike Menser, and welcome to Heavy Duty. The majority of people who bodybuild do so for non-competitive reasons, usually to enhance their fitness, their appearance, or both. You have probably been training for some time and are now considering competition or at least reaching a peak of condition, which is a science that few bodybuilders, even the top pros, have learned to do consistently. The first thing the novice competitor must learn is how to assess his existing condition so he or she will have adequate time to make the required changes in training and diet which will allow them to reach their peak on time. How do you know when you've peaked? You will have reached a peak condition when your body composition is such that you maintain all the muscular mass you've built and have eliminated all visible fat. The amount of time needed to prepare will hinge largely on your existing body fat levels. The leaner you are when you begin contest preparation, the less time will be required. During contest preparation, the acquisition of more size should not be a major concern, as it is difficult, though not impossible, to build muscle and lose fat simultaneously. Dieting too severely, coupled with overtraining, leads inevitably to muscle loss. If you follow my advice, you will at least maintain your existing mass. Assessing how much of your body weight is fat can be done by several methods, the best and most accurate ones being very expensive. The two most practical for the bodybuilder are hydrostatic, or underwater weighing, and skin pinch calipers. Hydrostatic weighing involves being weighed first in the regular manner and then underwater. Because muscle is denser than water, the individual's lean body mass, or muscle, will sink and be weighed, while fat, which is less dense than water, will float and not be counted. Using certain standard calculations, the difference between your regular body weight and underwater weight will tell how much of your body is made up of fat and how much is muscle. By knowing exactly how many pounds of fat are on your body, you can calculate how much time it will take to reach a percentage of body fat consistent with that condition we call ripped, usually three to six percent of overall body fat. Hydrostatic weighing tanks can usually be found on college campuses that have an exercise physiology department and increasingly at commercial establishments that perform physiology testing. The skin pinch caliper is much simpler, though not always as accurate. The procedure involves measuring skin thickness on various parts of the body, usually the biceps, triceps, and lower back. These measurements are compared with a standard chart and body fat levels can be assessed. Calipers can be found in some pharmacies and all medical supply stores. Before my second Mr. Olympia competition, I used hydrostatic weighing and my calculation involved two pounds of fat lost a week bringing me to a peak on time with absolutely no guesswork. Of course, the simplest and least expensive method is to merely look in the mirror. Are your chest muscles, your pecs, clearly delineated around the edges, giving them a squared off look? Can you grab fat in the nipple area, or is the skin tight and close to the muscle? What about the area around your navel? Does it jiggle, or is it tight, with no visible roll of fat? An area that provides a good indication of your overall condition is the lower back, on either side of the spine, right above the hips. If you can grab an inch or more of fat in that area, you will probably need up to 10 weeks of rigid dieting and training to get ripped. Before a contest, I frequently pinch the skin around my navel to see if it is thinning. If it is, and my size and strength remain intact, I continue what I'd been doing. If not, I make the necessary dieting and activity adjustments. In any case, five to six weeks should be the minimum time allocated for preparation, and anything more than 10 to 12 weeks becomes too taxing and draining on mind and body. If you tend towards leanness and lose fat easily, spend a solid six weeks training and dieting. If you are endomorphic, or tend a bit towards pudginess and need to lose more than 12 pounds, then spend 8 to 10 weeks. Look at it logically. 
even on the most severe diet, the maximum body fat you can possibly lose in one week is three pounds. At that rate, you could lose 18 pounds in six weeks, allowing no time for error or backsliding. Losing two pounds of fat a week is more practical and reduces the likelihood of losing muscle. If you try to lose too fast, you'll inevitably burn some muscle for, en for energy. Now that you've accurately assessed your existing condition, let's talk about diet and fat loss. Though it's true that increased levels of physical activity burn more calories and lead to faster weight losses, weight training is not the best way to burn up body fat. Your weight workouts should be used solely for the purpose of maintaining or increasing muscle mass. Body fat, you see, requires oxygen present in order to be metabolized for energy. However, the demands for energy imposed by anaerobic activities, such as weight training or sprinting, are so great and immediate that not enough oxygen can be supplied rapidly enough to metabolize fat for the required energy. Let me say it again most emphatically. Bodybuilding, weight training, what have you, does not use stored body fat for energy. It is only the sugar stored within the muscle itself, called glycogen, which can be metabolized in the presence of oxygen and used for such anaerobic activities as bodybuilding. The proper training formula in preparing for a contest should include weight training sessions that progressively decline in intensity the last two weeks leading up to the contest, and aerobic activity that increases in duration and frequency the last four to six weeks before the contest. At the start of your contest preparation period, your weight training session should be very intense. Hence, your aerobic activity should be of relatively short duration. Bicycle riding of six to ten miles a day at a slow, moderate pace once or twice a week, combined with or alternated with jogging maybe a mile and a half to two miles being adequate. As contest time nears, however, getting rid of body fat becomes an ever-increasing concern, and the intensity of the weight training sessions will decrease somewhat, and the duration of the aerobic or fat-burning activity increases. Increase your aerobic activity until you are bicycling at least twice a week for 30 to 45 minutes, and running three or more miles twice a week on alternate days. I prefer more running as it burns calories more quickly, though bicycling is an advantage as it is less traumatic to the joints of the ankles and knees. Jogging a mile burns 100 to 120 calories, or roughly 15 calories a minute, while bicycling at a moderate pace, 8 to 13 miles per hour, burns about 8 calories a minute. Your aerobic activities should all be performed at a relaxed pace. If you are breathless, you're increasing the proportion of sugar being burned for fuel and decreasing the use of body fat. If you can't talk easily while jogging or bicycling, you are working too intensely. Perform your aerobics at what is called a conversational pace, and you will be using up to 90% fat as fuel. So, reduce your pace, enjoy yourself, and burn fat at the same time. As important as increased activity levels are in getting ripped, diet is equally as important. For no matter how active you are, if you continue to consume more food calories than you burn through activity, you won't lose fat. The safest and most effective approach to dieting for a contest is to eat a well-balanced diet that is reduced in calories. A well-balanced diet is one that is composed of approximately 60% carbohydrates, 25% protein, and 15% fat. And the foods are derived from the four basic food groups, namely meats, fruits and vegetables, dairy products, and grains and cereals. Yes, I am recommending a relatively high carbohydrate intake, but most important, a reduced calorie intake. As long as you take in fewer calories than you need to maintain yourself, you will lose fat. If you require 3,000 calories a day to maintain yourself, and all of a sudden you reduce your daily intake to 2,000 calories, you'll lose body fat even if those 2,000 calories come from pure table sugar. 
I don't recommend you eat pure table sugar, as it would not constitute a well-balanced diet. But, nonetheless, what I say is pure, simple, medical fact. Losing fat is a matter of calorie reduction, and all of the three macronutrients, protein, carbohydrates, and fats, contain calories. Eating too many calories from protein sources will make you just as fat as calories from carbohydrates, and that's my point. A calorie is a calorie is a calorie, no matter what the source. To lose fat, you must reduce your intake below your daily maintenance need of calories. How do you know what your daily maintenance need of calories is? Easy. Every day for five days, write down everything you eat and the quantity. Everything. At the end of each day, sit down with a calorie counting book and add up the day's total calories. Remember, do that every day for five days. And after the fifth day, add the five numbers, divide by five, and you'll have your daily average calorie intake. Now, if you haven't gained or lost weight during that five-day period, then that is also your maintenance need of calories. To lose body fat, simply reduce your calories to a lower daily figure. Don't be too drastic at the start, however. Begin by cutting back your daily intake by 500 a day, and as each week passes, reduce them by perhaps 200 more calories a day. This gradual calorie reduction, coupled with progressively increased aerobic activity, will inevitably result in your being ripped if you have properly assessed your condition and have given yourself enough time. I'm not going to outline a complex diet day by day, as you already know all you need to know about what to eat. Remember, eat a well-balanced but reduced calorie diet and you will get ripped. And again, an occasional ice cream cone or piece of cake will not hurt so long as your daily caloric intake is below maintenance levels.